A quick update before we get into the video. For most of this video, I'm probably calling it Newer, but uh, I talked to my contact there and they said it was pronounced Newer. So my apologies for saying incorrectly, but in my defense, I am from Kentucky. And that's how I talk. All right, so here is the Neewer camera slider. This is what I am most excited about. I did ask them to send this to me and they did. So I like anything that comes in its own case. It helps when you have a lot of stuff to help it organize, keep things in individual cases. It's very nice. And this one has a very nice case, nice packaging. And it has a little protective stuff here to keep everything in place. All right, so got a lot of stuff here. First is a little quick release plate. So you just slide that in and out. This expands out. So you'll put this on your camera and then this clamps down on it. It has these two little grooves. Where those little nubbins go to hold it tight. And then you can screw it back on. And there's a little floating bubble there for to give you an idea of your level. Oh yeah, so there's the ball head. So it moves like that. They can even go all the way sideways. And this guy tightens it up. And then this guy would mount here, I guess that's right. And then this is like a little degrees. You can move it. So that's pretty nice. And of course it has a little spot for it, which is very nice. Here we have a bunch of camera cords. I guess this is just various cameras adapters. I have a Sony ZV-1. But it's nice to include a bunch of them in case you need it. Here's an ethernet cable for some reason. I don't know why. I'll figure that out later. Comes with a little Allen wrench and some screws. I guess we're tightening things up. And here we have a battery. All right, I didn't know if it was gonna be the same battery as my cameras or not, but it looks a little different. So yeah, it is small. It is the NPF550. And of course that would slot right in there. You don't need the box anymore, but in case you wanna order an extra one, which I might. Here is the remote control itself. You see like in this little joystick guy, little digital display. Oh, I see that's the RJ45 plugs in there. So it controls it, I guess. And then there's a power cord for it, I guess. And then I don't know what this is, but I'm assuming the battery slots on just like that. And there's an on off switch. Oh, does have power already? All right, so I'm not gonna turn it on just yet. I gotta figure out how to use it. And then, oh, even nicer. This is a, I guess a charging plate for your battery. Micro USB, that was very nice. So this, this is like an all-inclusive little kit here. All right, so I am gonna plug this battery in. I'm gonna use a battery pack to charge it, but if you plug it in, it gives you a little reading of how the battery works which is nice. I have GVM batteries for my GVM lights and they do not, I mean, it has like a green, amber or a red light, but it doesn't tell you exactly how much it is like this one, which is very nice. All right, and here's the main piece, of course. And we have a large booklet, of course, explaining how to use it. So there's the little teeth cable to let you, that's how it moves on the slider itself. And then this, I guess, just mounts to a tripod. It has feet. If you just want to put it on a table on the end here, right? You can move these feet. So you unscrew this feet, then they ratchet. If you can see that in there, nice. And then you can just set it down and I can just set it on the table itself. And essentially the way it works is you move this dial here in accordance with this side over here. And that tells you what kind of angle you're gonna have on the camera, so. But I'll show a full demonstration of that. So again, I assume it mounts on a tripod there, but we'll have to get that out and set up and take a look at that. It's very nice. Instruction manual has a lot of details in it. All right, well, let me uh, figure out how to use it and we'll come back and I'll show you the setup there. All right, so one thing we can do is little guys or feet in case I want to put it just on the table itself. All right, there we go. We got a setup. And the good thing is we have this little bubble here. So I can tell that it's level. This desk, I think is 46 inches. All right, and then this guy, of course, you can just screw on here and just screws on like that. You don't have to use this. You could just use the one that came with it. And there's little measurements there. This, I believe, is how you power the bike up. And then this is the charger. And then there's remote. There's the battery charger. I already set that up. Well, I want to slap my battery in here. I'm going to hook up this RJ45, which is fascinating to me. But that's how you control it. I mean, I can see, I think they may offer a wireless model. So I could see where some people would, could be better off for wireless. For me, it's not going to be any problem. So I'm going to be using this in my house, in my door anywhere. So I don't see any reason why I I wouldn't have any problem using the wired version. And then let's turn it on. And then we can see the knee wear. That's us by the AB point. I didn't adjust anything really here. There's a tiny amount of noise, but that is drowned out easily by a razor blade over here in the background. So, all right, so I did that. It just went right to here. So we can do live motion. i press that in there. It says manual load or go auto mode. Oh, and loop. Loop. And let's hit start and see what happens. So yeah, it's going slowly across like that. I didn't adjust hardly anything, so. And then there's a button there to stop it if you wanted to stop. 
So, it moves slowly. But I guess we want a quality picture, that's how it should be. And Dell does tell me percentage of the battery, so is that 96%? Alright, 7% I mean. So let's stop it. Oh, you can set like a dirt rate chassis. So you can set your start point, you can set it to loop. That's how hard to get out of here. Alright, if you hold the button down, it goes back. You get time lapse. You can set exposure and all these things. Uh, I don't want to be doing any of that, so that's fine. Yeah, if you hold the button down, it goes back. You can reset the AB point. Well, let me do that. You can go settings, English, factory, init, and then it tells you the firmware version. So, really not much to do for me other than live motion. So, manual mode. Let's see what manual mode does. I'm going to start. <laughs> oh, I see. That's pretty neat. So, now I have it set speed 100%, ramp, yes. If I hit the arrow this way, it goes. And as soon as I let off of it, it will stop. It will slowly stop, but it stops. Then I'll hold back. He goes back to the screen. That's pretty good. Let's just try to get some camera action here. So let me turn it off over here. So like this is my new Wi-Fi. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna move this to 20 on this side. And it's on 20 on that side as well. I don't know if that showed up. I'm gonna move these little guys. As soon as you move one, it moves the other. And now I'm gonna tighten it down. Both are around 20. So now that it's found my AB point. I'm gonna do live motion. I'm gonna do auto mode. And I'm gonna set it to loop. Yes. And we're gonna start it. I also say that the camera is just set to auto. I'm not a cinematographer. And again, no real noise. So again, I have it set to loop. So it's just going to keep doing that. All right. So there you go. Now you can see how that works. And we'll go ahead, play with it some more. And then we'll show you what that third look like. And then we'll play with some more. And then we'll try it on a tripod. And then we'll do some fancy stuff again. So here's the newer slider. This would be the back and that would be the front. Currently, I've just been sitting on tabletop and it's been very well been very good helping me with my b-roll i need more b-roll as much as i like this kit this little case it is a pain taking it in and out all the time i need to just set up all the time i can't I only have one table here i'm remodeling my whole area here so we'll get better but for now i only got one table so this is a big sturdy thing and the knee wear tripod is a big sturdy thing so this is my original plan in the first place anyhow put this guy on that guy Right, so the lens goes to the front here, and this is the back anyhow, so that works up perfectly. I'll put this little nub. This nub doesn't really move. This one can slide around, so we can fit that nub in the front there, and then we just find a screw hole. This works. Should fit right there, and then screw them nice and tight. Screw it. So now, got this slider guy, and we can just slide them right in there. All right, let me move this up a little bit so you can see. You can slide it right in, and it clicks. So now it's stuck in there and let me get it centered a little bit. And now once we got it centered, we just tighten up this other guy. And now look look at that. That. I can move it this way. I can move it this way. It's pretty legit. But as you saw in the initial unboxing, I also got these bad boys. So these guys, you can really, I assume, either use either side. Just in case I was worried about how stable it was here. There are screw holes here. I can screw it in. Just like that. And then on the bottom piece here, you can clamp this guy here. So we can just move this guy here and then just tighten it completely on down. That's snug. So yeah, you unscrew part of the black there and then it moves down. And then I just gotta move this guy around to a logical spot there. And that seems like about right. So you can see with this piece on, doesn't wobble at all. I mean, it feels way sturdier to me having that there. That does negate some of your movement. So yeah, I mean, that negates your movement. You need to tighten it up at that point. But if you want the stablest shot you can get, you'll put those little arm guys on it, right? If you just wanna move this guy around, then you wouldn't use these guys, so. So I was just using this slider to record my razor blade and I learned that this little handle guy, you know, it was hitting the rack earlier if I had to adjust it and move it downwards, right? Like before, you know, I had it up like this and it would hit right here. So I had to lower it down like this and I can still adjust it how I would like, but it doesn't hit the moving target now, so pretty good four to six weeks later all right at this point i've had these products unboxed and used for a little over two months so just having a static product shot with an occasional awesome hand gesture can get boring for the viewer that's why i started adding in funny clips obviously however if i put too many of these clips in people get annoyed at the video uh, so i needed something else i need to add in b-roll footage Anyhow, with the camera slider, I know of at least two cool things I can do to add in some good professional looking B-roll. There's what I'm gonna call front, back, and side to side. Even though I've had all this equipment for two months, I've really only used the side to side option up to this point. 
Essentially, you just set it up and let it go back and forth side to side like it's been doing here this whole time I've been yapping. Now for the stability rods, uh, like I only have one connected right here. You know, it's a spoiler alert. Basically, I probably wasted my money on these. They work fine. And they, I think they do look cool. But since I have my slider on this very sturdy newer tripod, I really don't need the stabilizers. This tripod, which I love, is more than capable of holding the weight of the slider and moving to various angles. With the stabilizers on, you can't really adjust it freely. With this on, if I go to lift this forward, right, it's gonna tweak it here. And same thing with swiveling it back and forth like this. It's, I can't move it. If I take this guy off, which is very easy, you just unscrew this part and then unscrew this part. I can move it however I want. So I can angle it like this, right? And again, you can see it doesn't need it, right? It's just, this thing's sturdy enough. It's not really a problem. Even like this, like see, it never, it never falls over or anything like that. So again, I love this tripod. It's more than capable of holding the weight of the slider and moving to various different angles. With the stabilizers, you can't really adjust it freely. Oh yeah, plus depending on where I'm shooting, I frequently take the slider off of the tripod. I'll show that more in a second, but if you have a large object, I leave the slider on the tripod but then if I'm filming a physically smaller object, I'll often take the slider off the tripod and put it on the actual desk with the object to get a better shot. So I showed that earlier in the video, right? I left the quick release plate on here. So yeah, so if I just wanna take it off, pop it off. Like with the stabilizer, I can't do that. And then you know, we'll put it back right back on. Boom, right back on there. And we gotta tighten this guy back up. Boom, no problem. Now, if I was to use this on a smaller, more flimsy tripod, then the stabilizer would probably be more beneficial. But for my use case, I found the newer tripod and the slider to be a winning combination and it just works great like this for me. So again, one last time, if it wasn't clear, I love the tripod. It's very sturdy. It works great for everything I need it for. I love it. I'm very thankful newer sent it over. I can very comfortably recommend this product. I think it's top notch, high quality. So for the side to side action, like I've shown earlier, right? I've used that in a bunch of videos, uh, but most notably the first one, I think that really showed it in a impressive manner was the review for my Razer Blade 17. I filmed a bunch of different B-roll and then my editor took it all together and made this sweet intro that we were able to use for a YouTube short and as the intro of the video. And it, I mean, it's, it's very impressive. I mean, I'm very proud of it. It looks better than just about anything on my channel in the past, right? We'll show a clip, but it, it just looks cool. I, mean, I don't know what else to show about this other than it's just really up to the quality of my videos. So if I did have a complaint, it'd be what to do with this controller. So obviously the controller's wired and then when it goes back and forth, it can hit this little bar right here. But again, you can take this off, but there's really no, like, there's nowhere to mount it here. I could take this little arm off and then it could go back and forth, no problem. And it's long enough that I can sort of balance it on this little piece here and let it run and it does all right. But I'm always kind of weary that it might catch this and then pull on this, you know. So essentially, I mean, obviously for the first part of the video, I wasn't holding it, but for the most part, when I film B-roll, I literally sit here and hold it while it goes back and forth. Now, if I, don't use the tripod and I have this just sitting on a tabletop, you can just set this next to it and it's perfectly fine. You can see, so it will work even with this bar, but it's still, you know, some of this, it'll make you nervous, right? It'd be nice if the controller had some kind of clamp or something, that way I could just mount it to the tripod or to the bar, you know, something to do with it, but I don't at this point have anything to do with it. And so again, it's fine for B-roll, but in the past I have interviewed people. And if I do another interview, I thought it might be nice to have another camera angle with the slider going back and forth and filming me the whole time. And so I mean, I'll have to figure that out. Most likely I'd have it's the desk setup because I wouldn't trust it, you know, for a 30 minute interview or longer. I wouldn't trust it running back and forth with the cord there. I'd be nervous the whole time that something's gonna happen and, you know, mess up my interview. But again, I can figure it out. It's just, it'd be nice to have. I believe Newer makes a wireless one, but obviously I haven't tried that one and I don't know how it compares to this one. I don't know if it's as sturdy as this one or, you know. This one I love, I don't wanna complain about it necessarily. and I don't wanna refer you to the wireless one. Uh, just know that, you know, this cord issue can be a little bit annoying, but for the most part, you know, it's far from a deal breaker. I really enjoy the slider itself. That's a minor complaint I have about the slider, but everything else is pretty great about it. Anyhow, let me try to do the front and back action. I'll see if it makes a cool B-roll or not. I've yapped for too long here, but I love this product. I know for a fact that I'm making better videos with it. The aforementioned Razer Blade 17 video is doing pretty well for my channel. So I know that the increased quality of that video has helped the video itself do better for the channel. I know it has better retention. Analytics in general are just pretty good for that video. Also, it's worth noting, I've used this slider only with the Sony ZV-1. I have two of them, so I'll swap them out. And 
like a true filmmaker, I've shot everything on intelligent auto. So I'm not tweaking any settings. It's all auto. That's really what the greats recommend, I believe. Anyhow, let me get a table over here and we'll set up. We'll try this fancy front and back action I've been bragging about. All right, so here is my Alienware X17 laptop. So something big like a laptop, you know, it doesn't really fit on the desk, but you can still get pretty good B-roll. You set these to make sure your angle. So what I normally do is I will use this in manual mode. So when you turn it on, it finds the AB point, does it every time you turn the power on or off. You can see in there, it is still getting the video. And I'm gonna do manual this time, and then I'll start it. So you gotta hold it when it's and start it, and then move it. This is 100% speed according to this, so you know, it's not super fast, but you don't want it too fast, I think. So I'll move it all the way over here, and make sure my item is still in a good picture, right? And this, so you can see it's still sees it in here. I don't hate to break the news to you, but I don't have a multi-million dollar studio. This is my basement. I got these weird tile things on the wall. So I made kind of a good look what I like. At least I like how it looks here, but if we get too far this way or too far that way, it's ugly. So you wanna make sure your shot is framed up correctly, of course. Yeah, you can do it manual. I mean, all I ever use is live motion and either manual or auto. And then with auto, you start it. You can either set it to loop or not loop. So I've started it. And now it's just gonna go through and film and it's gonna look pretty cool. However, I have learned, at least from watching other YouTube videos stuff, that it's, instead of just being plain like this, it is a good idea to spice up the picture a little bit. You know, add some little accoutrements in here. Let me put my little Android guy, right? So that looks pretty good. Now this is with a laptop. You know, it's big enough that it covers up most of my desk. So I do use the tripod for that, right? So we're still on the tripod here. Now, if I wanna film something smaller, like say I wanted to film just my cell phone. This is my Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4. If I wanted to film it, that's a lot of space. So it'll make more sense for me to move the slider onto the desk and get a tighter shot. All right, so now I have the slider going this way. I did lower one of the legs to make this tripod lean this way as well. And then I set these right on zero. So it goes in a straight line, essentially. Again, I haven't tried this before, so we're gonna see how it works. And ideally it's just gonna slowly push in to the little Android dude. And of course you can make it look better or worse if you change the lighting and you know, ideally different backgrounds for different B-rolls and stuff. But again, I have limited space to work with here. All right, so hopefully this is gonna be a cool shot. I don't know if it is. I don't know if it matters, but I always try to get it back into the, it gets you know, kind of wonky if it's not straight. So it doesn't pull back super strong. I let it go forward with the leg down. And again, maybe you're not even supposed to do that, but we're gonna see how well it works. But I probably won't do it again because I am lazy and the side to side works fine for me. All right, so I have moved it up a little bit. And again, for this portion of the video, we're pretending our subject is a little Android dude. And here's a couple cool things. One, like I told you, if we wanna spice the video up or at least our subject up a little bit, Instead of just having him laying there by himself, we just add some little decorations in there, right? We have these little mushroom dudes and it just makes the shot look a little cooler. At least I think it does. As I was saying before, you can just adjust these guys. So you need to adjust them and then tighten them and adjust them and tighten them. And then there's a couple other cool things here. This guy here has a little level bubble. So I know it's level here. And then there's a level bubble on this little guy on both sides. And then, you know, I can adjust it how I want it for my, I want to get more of my little dude in there, right? And then when this guy's off, it can move freely. I don't know if you're supposed to or not, but it does when it's unplugged. So essentially you need to get it and figure out how much of these guys you got to twist. So I'm gonna try five degrees and we'll see how well that adjusts my camera on this side. And it does matter which way you, know, you twist the bar. So at 10 degrees, I think we're gonna catch most of what we need. And then it should be centered in the middle here. And then here it works as well. All right, so that's pretty good. And then, you know, this is standard, right? If you just wanna plug it in, it's gonna find the AB point. Oh, here's another point. So I'm taking the battery out, but there's a C port here and it should work fine. I have USB-C plugged in. You can see it's just plugged in with USB-C, no battery and it works. So if for some reason your battery was dead, you could do that. Or if you just want to carry a battery around. And 
I didn't show on camera, but I just hot swapped it. I just put the battery in and pulled the cord out and it works just fine. All right, and then again, I haven't used time lapse. You can change the AB settings and all that kind of stuff, but I haven't messed with any of that. All I'm doing is simple live motion. We do auto mode, start it. And like I said, as long as you have room where it's not gonna hit this guy, you can just set it on your table and it should be fine. Or this cord's long enough now, I can just set it on the floor or have a chair over here and it should be fine. Uh, but we're gonna get cool footage here. So if I put this here on the video portion, it's gonna cut out on the camera feed. It's gonna cut right out. And you, well, I'm not gonna cut out, but you'll basically, this little dude will disappear. And now, cover it all the way up. And now when I start it, it's gonna do a cool thing where it can't see the little dude. And then he's slowly gonna appear. And then he's out of focus because he's not the closest thing. And then as soon as this guy gets out of the way, it'll get into focus on little dude there, right? Boom. Now we're focused on him. And it looks cool. And you know, you can make that look more fancy, right? But essentially that is the slider. It's pretty cool. Like I said, it's making me a better video guy, YouTuber, whatever you call it. I'm a big fan of it and I feel comfortable recommending it. So it's gonna get the uh, big thumbs up for me. And then here's my, that's what I was talking about earlier. That's where my camera would normally go, but I have you know, one slider, one recording here. So the slider certainly, and this tripod is excellent as well. So, and these little guys, like I said, I bought these myself, just to be clear, this is the same one, right? It just pops in and out. And then of course, with that little slot case on, it sits there perfectly. So I usually have my cameras just sitting up on the stand and they work uh, great. So yeah, I'm a big fan of the quick release plates the slider itself, and of course the tripod. The stabilizer bars, if you don't get the heavy duty newer tripod, then you should probably get those. But personally, I don't really need them. So they're just gonna stick around in case maybe I go somewhere at some point that may need a heavy duty stabilizer, but for now, they're just gonna sit in the box. All right, that's it. Thanks to Newer for sending it over and thanks for checking me out. All right, give us a big thumbs up. Thanks.